Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets and welcome back to a new video tutorial under Network Security or Information Security. And in this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a theoretical look at the concept of symmetric key cryptography versus asymmetric key cryptography, also known as private key versus public key cryptography. So if you've been watching this entire Network Security or Information Security playlist, we've covered quite a lot of basic encryption and decryption algorithms and basic cipher techniques. So if you have missed those videos, you can check it out in this playlist. And coming back to today's topic, basically there are two different ways in which this cryptography happens in these encryption and decryption algorithms. And the two different ways are symmetric or asymmetric. So that's what we are going to see theoretically how both work and what are the differences between the two. So starting off with symmetric key cryptography, also known as private key cryptography. So let's try to understand the situation over here and then we'll understand the entire process properly. So we have our sender Alice and we have our receiver Bob. Now the sender Alice wants to send some text message to Bob over the network. Let's say this is on the internet. So in symmetric key, what happens is they agree on a single shared private secret key. Okay. So it's shared, but it's only shared between Alice and Bob. And that's why it's secret or private, which is only between Alice and Bob, right? So no third party or no third person knows this secret key. So this is that key that they are using for encryption as well as decryption. So what Alice does is it takes the plain text. It uses this secret key and it performs encryption. And after encryption, it is converted to cipher text, which is passed on to the internet. So let's say this part is the internet part. And then it is sent over the, to the internet to receive a Bob. And then Bob uses the same shared secret key to perform decryption and get the plain text back. So this is the process of symmetric key cryptography or private key cryptography. It's pretty basic, right? So there is one single private key. So let's read a little bit of theory on this topic. So in symmetric key, the same key is used by sender for encryption and the receiver for decryption and vice versa also. So if receiver wants to send something to the sender, then again, the same key is going to be used for encryption and decryption. Okay. Now this key is shared, but it's not public. That is, it is not available to everyone. It is shared only between the two parties who are performing the communication. Now the key is secret and kept private between the sender and receiver. That's why the name private key cryptography and for n users in a network, the number of keys required is n into n minus one divided by two. Okay. So this formula is important and you need to remember this because there could be a question wherein you will be given n number of users who want to communicate on internet on a network. And then you will be asked to calculate the number of symmetric keys required. So let's take a scenario over here. Let me just scroll down a bit. Let's say there are three people who want to communicate, right? So I'll say one, two and three. So there are three people. So there would be one key, which is going to be shared between one and two, right? So this is K one key one. Then there is one key, which is going to be shared between one and three, right? So this is K two or key number two. And then there would be one, which is required between two and three, right? So this is K three. So number of keys is equal to three, right? Now let's try to apply this formula itself. Now n is number of users, right? So n into n minus one, the whole divide by two is equal to what? So we'll substitute n as three. So three into three minus one upon two, which is equal to three into two divided by two. So these two, two gets canceled and you ultimately get three. So you can see that three keys are required, right? Okay. So let's take one more example of this same scenario. Let's say there are four people now who want to communicate with each other on a network. So the first key would be between one and two. Let's say this is key one. Then communication will be happening over here, key two. Then there would be one more key shared between these two guys, k three. Then we have communication between these two guys, k four. Let me just name these guys one, two, three and four. Now you can see that number one person has to communicate with number four also. So there would be one more key like this diagonally k five. And similarly, two and three also needs to communicate, right? So one more key between two and three would be K six. So for four people, we had six keys. So let's see if this formula applies over here also. So N is four, right? So four into four minus one, the whole divide by two, which is two ones are two twos are, and then four minus one is three. So three into two is going to give you six. So this formula is universally applicable to any number of users. So you can calculate the number of keys required in symmetric key cryptography when the number of users is known. Okay. Okay. So this was symmetric key cryptography. And if you've seen the previous video tutorials from this playlist, 
up until now we've been using symmetric key cryptography only because there was only one private key which was used to perform encryption and decryption let's say for caesar cipher the key is 3 right so we encrypt the text by replacing the alphabets three places down the line in encryption and when we are decrypting it we simply use the key 3 to replace the alphabets three places up the line right so that's what was happening and key, key was 3 over there similarly the key in vernum cipher if you see in the previous video that is the one time pad was same for encryption and decryption so all all those are basic symmetric key cryptography algorithms now let's take a look at asymmetric key cryptography so in asymmetric key cryptography there are basically two keys involved so every user who wants to communicate has a set of private key and public key and the encryption and decryption goes as follows so let's say we have a scenario over here where again sender is alice and receiver is bob right so alice wants to send message to bob so as i mentioned every user is gonna have a public key and private key right so the private key as the name suggests is gonna be private with that user only no other user can know this private key so let's say alice has his own private key so it's not gonna be known by any other person but alice also has public key so this public key can be known by every other person on the network okay so this is the concept so now alice wants to send something to bob so what Alice is going to do is, Alice is going to take the plain text and perform encryption by Bob's public key. So Alice knows Bob's public key, right? So public key is something which is universally known to everyone on the network. So Alice uses this public key and performs encryption on the plain text and then get the cipher text and send it to Bob. Now the crux here is receiver Bob can perform decryption using only Bob's private key, okay? Because Alice used Bob's public key the message that is the ciphertext can be decrypted only by Bob using his private key. So Bob is going to use his private key to decrypt the message. Any other person, let's say there is another guy Tom who has his own public and private key K1 and K2. So if Tom tries to decrypt this ciphertext using any of the public or private key he has, he won't be able to do it because this ciphertext can be decrypted only by Bob's private key. And since Bob's private key is private to him, it's not known to anyone, right? So only Bob can decrypt this message. So he decrypts this message and gets back the plain text. So this is basically asymmetric key cryptography in a very basic explanation or basic scenario. And it's also known as public key cryptography. So let's read a little bit of more theory and you'll understand it very well. So in asymmetric cryptography, two different keys are used. That is private key and public key. So one is used for encryption and another one is used for decryption. Every communicating party needs just a key pair, right? So Alice needs to only have private key and public key for his own and Bob also needs to have private and public key of its own that's it they do not need to maintain a lot of keys like what we did in symmetric key cryptography so we'll discuss that problem in a minute also so one of the two keys is called public key and other one is called private key and as the name suggests they have their similar purposes so public is public to everyone private is private to only that person private key remains secret that's what I'm trying to say lastly only the corresponding public and private key pairs can be used for to perform encryption and decryption of messages and no other key can be used. So if Alice is encrypting a plain text using Bob's public key, only Bob's private key can decrypt that message. It's basically like a lock and key combination that only one key can open one type of lock, right? No other key can be used to open that lock. So you can make that reference over here. And lastly, for n users in a network, the number of keys required is n into 2. Which means that if there are 100 users, every user is going to have his own public and private key, which means that total number of keys would be 200. Similarly, if there are 1000 users, the number of keys involved would be 2000. So this is where symmetric key has its drawback. That is in symmetric key, the number of keys goes on increasing a lot when the number of users increase, right? But in asymmetric key cryptography, the number of keys only double every time. So let's, let's take a scenario over here. Let's say we have 100 users, okay? So in symmetric key cryptography, what would be the number of keys? So keys would be 100 into 100 minus 1 is 99 upon 2. So this would be 9900 divided by 2. So this would give us 4950 keys. So this is a lot, right? So these are huge number of keys and this goes on increasing when the number of users increase. So let's see what happens in asymmetric key cryptography. So there are 100 users. And the number of keys each user has is 2, right? So it's very basic, right? Using this formula, you can see 100 into 2, which is 200 keys. That's it. 
सो ओनली टू हंड्रेड कीज आर यूज इन ए सीमेट्रिक वेन हंड्रेड हंड्रेड यूज आर प्रेजेंट बट यू कैन सी द नंबर ऑफ कीज ओवर यूर इज सो मच मोर देन कंपेयर टू ए सीमेट्रिक क्रिप्टोग्राफी ऑन द कॉन्ट्ररी ए सीमेट्रिक की क्रिप्टोग्राफी इज अ लिटल डिफिकल्ट टू अचीव बिकॉज देर हैज टू बी यूनिक कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट की विच कैन एनक्रिप्ट एंड डीक्रिप्ट मैसेजेस सो एवरी टाइम यू हैव टू अप्लाई सम मैथमेटिकल अलगोरिदम टू क्रिएट दोज पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट कीज राइट एंड सिमेट्रिक की इज वेरी ईजी यू जस्ट यूज वन की फॉर बोथ एनक्रिप्शन एंड डीक्रिप्शन सो या दिस वॉज अ लिटल बिट ऑफ थियरी ऑन सिमेट्रिक वर्सेज ए सीमेट्रिक की क्रिप्टोग्राफी एंड इन फर्दर वीडियोज वील सी अ लॉट ऑफ एलगोरिदम्स विच शुड आइदर बी सिमेट्रिक और ए सीमेट्रिक इन नेचर सो दैट्स द रीजन वाई दिस कॉन्सेप्ट नीड्स टू बी वेरी क्लियर थियोरेटिकली एंड हाउ इट वर्क्स and yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you like this video and understood the concept if you like this video please give it a thumbs up please let me know in the comments that you like this video and do share it with your friends as well also if you haven't yet subscribed on this channel make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of video tutorials coming soon and then you'll get notified whenever i upload a new video thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys in the next video tutorial peace